Hello and welcome to this week's angling blog. This week you join me on the banks of Village Pool and we're in search of silvers on the whip and on the waggler. Arriving on the swim, the sun is just coming through the trees behind and as we pan round, how can you not be excited by a day's fishing on a swim like that? Looks absolutely beautiful. So before we do get into this week's blog, I just want to say thank you to everybody that takes the time to subscribe to the channel, likes the videos and leaves the comments down below. I try my best to reply to every single comment on the channel, so if you've got any questions on today's blog, leave it in the questions down below and I'll get round to answering them as soon as I can. As you can see behind me, we've got the bare minimum of tackle, we've got a waggler rod and a whip and it is my favourite type of fishing and something I really, really should do more of. I just love the simplicity of it, just coming out with a little bit of bait, a waggler rod, a whip and just fish for anything that swims. It's a type of fishing that I really do love and I'm really excited for today's session. Let's have a look at the setup, the swim and how we're going to approach it. Begin by just concentrating round about that line there on the whip, just feeding maggots and a little bit of hemp. Obviously we want to try and avoid Mr. Carp really and we start putting hemp in, it's going to start putting a bed down. Already just feeding that little bit of maggot, you can begin to see signs of fish being attracted already so hopefully we can have a bit of fun on that line. Looking a bit further out, we're lining up with that old peg over there and we're going to be fishing round about here on the waggler. And I've already put a bit of hemp and a bit of corn over there and I'm just going to let that settle I think and let the fish come in, keep feeding a little bit of bait on it and then we'll go on that in a bit. We're just going to have a bit of fun on the whip to begin with and see if we can get a few bites and then we'll see what's been attracted by those bigger baits and I'm hoping they're going to get down on the bottom that hemp and corn and when we come to fish it some of them better quality fish might have settled on it. So looking at the side tray nice and simple we've got some corn for that far out line we've got plenty of red maggot for the whip and we've got loads and loads of hinders hemp. I was cooking that up last night and yeah that is going to be the bait that's hopefully going to keep them fish in them lower layers and attract some of them better quality fishing but yeah nice and simple side tray so the whip that we're going to be using is the Dinsmore 5 meter whip nice and simple we've got that down to a 4 by 16 maggot float when you're fishing the whip like this you really need a float that's going to take enough weight so you can flick it out there and get out there but when the fish are going to be on the drop a bit you need a bit of finesse as well so that float i'm hoping is going to give me the weight to get out there but also the finesse of them shy bites. I've got a strung out shotting pattern of number eight weights, and that's down to a size 18 hook. Starting off by just feeding a bit of maggot, just trying to make a bit of noise, attract some fish in. I've got the whip set so when it gets to the bottom, it is just on the bottom when it falls in that arc, but I've got a feeling that a lot of the bites are gonna end up being on the droppers and fish do come up in the water for them maggots. There we go. You see there? No surprise that that's a, a rud just coming on the drop. And the key with this line really isn't about feeding heavy enough to put bait on the bottom. You really are looking to catch those silvers on the drop and do your best to avoid, you know, Mr. Carp. If you can get them silvers up in the water, you're gonna really try and avoid him. And that's a skimmer coming on the drop as well. And when people think about fishing for these fish, they always think about, you know, being on the bottom. And that just shows that these type of skimmers will come up in the water and you can target them like that. They'll be in the mix with all the roach and the rod. But, you know, you get them going, you can do a nice net. So you can see there started shallowing up and these better quality fish are always up in the water that's how you can play the game a little bit you know start off with the small ones but when you start seeing them swirls you know these guys are about and the great fun about a whip you can catch those little fish but when you're hooking to something a bit bigger it's dead exciting and it doesn't have to be too big to get the heart going so I just had a go on the waggler just seeing a bit of bubbling coming up on that waggler line and 
have a quick look over there with floats beverage straight away that more positive line with the hemp and the corn instantly a better quality fish and a lovely little roach just coming on the waggler on corn what a lovely little fish that is you can just see there by the difference in feeding you know just putting corn and hemp rather than just maggot when you do get a bite it is a bit of quality to it. I just feel like a bream but <laughs> on here you never really know <laughs> how many times have I got it wrong for the regulars to the channel will know what I mean there and Mr Carp pops up so he's just decided to wake up and that is what I do love about the waggler and the whole point of today really just getting out getting a few bites for whatever comes along and this line most definitely allows you to do that See there he is, Mr. Carp. And that waggler, three pound line straight through a piece of corn. Been feeding that line quite a bit, haven't we? And no surprise that Mr. Carp got on the party. So being an angler I wouldn't change for the world and fishing every week you get to see all the little changes. And one that I love this time of year is when you start seeing them little balls of fluff skating across the surface. Every time I see them I always wish the mum best of luck and hopefully if we come back on here later in the year, there'll be five proper ducklings. By leaving that line a little bit before we went on it, there's definitely a few over there. Straight after Mr. Carp, we've gone in, we've got a much better roach. And at the beginning of the blog, I said why I love the pool. And it is the variety from carp to roach. The waggler's just sunk. And it feels like a roach, if I'm being honest. It's got that jaggedy thud. Of a roach looks like a tench i think yeah it's a tench same type of fight isn't it the tench and the roach almost that thudding and the hope with this blog was just to show how much fun you can have on simple tactics but when you fish like this you really don't know what's going to be next so let's have a look at the setup that we're using on the waggler i've got my 13 foot cordon glide i've teamed it up with a switch reel and on there i've got three pound line down to a three gram busy wag from drennan and it was my mate Gaddy who got me onto these and what a great little bit of kit they are especially if you're fishing on the drop but also perfect for registering bites like we're going to do now I've got that locked in place with two sticks from Dinsmore and that's down to two tiny little shot and that is the only shot on the line so you get a really slow fall and no hook link straight through three pound line to a size 12 hook and a piece of corn. These two little shots here are key to the rig and again something that Gary showed me them two shots stay on the bottom you can almost tighten up just gradually to them so the float dips down in the water it's really sensitive and what you almost get is a little bolt effect the fish picks the bait up you get a tiny little lift in the float or it sinks away but that little bolt effect from that little two shot nine times out of ten hooks the fish and I do get a lot of questions on the blog asking for advice. And the biggest piece of advice I can give you is surround yourself with positive people, you know, good mates that you have a laugh with. They help you and you help them along the way and make you a better angler. There can be a lot of negativity in fishing and people that haven't got your back and have had that over the years. But surround yourself with the right people and you won't go far wrong. Blue skies. A bend in the rod and that rig that I just shown the float just sits there and then slowly slides away and the fish is almost hooking itself and that line out there is in complete contrast to the whip line most definitely it's not a bite of chuck but when you do get one it is definitely a bit of a tussle on the rod and good fun and one thing you can always guarantee with Mr Bream where there's one there's always more just by drip feeding that bait over there, not going too mad, feeding so the bait gets to the bottom and just plugging away at it and say when that float goes it's always quality. Another lovely bream just coming on the waggler and with the session coming to an end again on the waggler always quality. The vlog does come to an end there now and in the end of the session picked up a few of those nice roach that you can see on screen now. It really has been good fun today, fishing the waggler and the whip for anything that swims and hopefully this vlog has just shown the enjoyment you can get by just going out there, simple tactics, simple baiting approach 
and you can have loads of fun. When that float goes under, you really don't know what the next bite's gonna be. All that remains now is to wish us all tight lines in your own fishing. It'd be great if you could like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch us all next week. Tight lines.